Hi, my name is Erin Barra. I'm a writer, producer, and an educator. I have my hands in a lot of different technologies, both hardware and software. Things that facilitate me to stay in my flow state or help me to be expressive, it's like, that's what I gravitate towards. So I got the Song Maker Kit and I just wanted to do my thing, honestly. I wanted to make a song my way using the hardware and the software since it's sort of this like entire tech ecosystem. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of show you the process and talk you through how I did it. What's cool about it is that I'm using a lot of um, slide and after pressure gestures to mimic and control the sound as it's going. So if I pull out here, you can see that this is an extremely long pass where I was just practicing the same pattern over and over and trying to detune things on purpose sometimes and find the spaces where I could make bends and do really cool things uh, without it seeming distracting. I wanted it to seem fitting. So once I had the bass pattern, I, I went and I started using a piece of software called Cthulhu. And it's a chord generator, but then also an arpeggiator, like a very intentional arpeggiator. Uh, so it's really two pieces of software in one, and I'm using both um, I'm using both sides of the software. So the first one here is the chord generator. So every time I press one of these squares on the light pad block, it's actually playing a chord for me. So what it is is box 18th chorale in D minor, just chopped up. So it's like halfway in between slicing up an audio file, but it's actually playing back MIDI. So every single slice is a MIDI chord, right? So as I play through this, it's this kind of Baroque progression. Um, and I wanted to Baroque it some more, <laughs> break it if you will. <laughs> so I just started kind of messing around on it. And it's responding a lot to, to the gestural mo motions that I'm making. So I just pressed play and then I just kind of jammed along with it. So I'll, I'll put the metronome on and kind of um, re-emulate this so you can get an idea. With that, I came up with a really long passage of sequences. And a lot of times I'm playing chords backwards, so I'll play one chord and then I'll play the chord that actually was supposed to come before it. So I'm reversing uh, progressions from a Bach chorale using this piece of technology, this chord generator, which is sending that MIDI information, those chords that I'm playing, into an instance of Equator here. So this is literally just a preset and all three sound engines, which is two instances of Equator and one of Strobe, they're literally just the presets. Maybe tweaked a tiny thing here or there, but it's it's just right out of the box. Um, and it felt right to me. So as I was coming up with the patterns, I just picked the sound that seemed to match the, the movement that I was making. So that's sending the MIDI into Equator here. Beyond that, this entire large pass of MIDI, I just sliced it into little clips that are playing back one bar each, right? So I've got many, 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 many clips here. And you can see down here, I've set them to have a follow action. So one out of every two times, it's gonna play any other clip in the series of clips that I have. And then two out of those times, it's gonna play the clip that's previous to it. So again, I'm like backwards composing this. And then I just let the computer generate which pattern happens when. So I'm letting it play a, a role in composing this piece as I go. So it was really fun to live in this like nonlinear world that Ableton provides for me because as I was going, it was like creating new patterns for me the whole time. There was never any like definitive version of this song ever until I printed it. So I did the exact same thing with the same file, except this time I'm using the ARP generator on Cthulhu. So you can see I'm deciding um, the contour of the arpeggiation, the transposition of certain notes as it's coming in here. And then I did the exact same thing with the follow actions here. So it's choosing. And 
it's being sent over here to this version or this instance of equator. Again, just another preset. And then I'm using this Michael Brower uh, motion maker uh, waves plugin that's really cool and is creating this sense of sweeping and stereoness to it that really made it kind of stick out for me. So the chords are dead center and the arpeggiation is sort of happening in the stereo field. So that honestly is all the melodic and harmonic content in the entire song. So I think that when you have something that's extremely expressive like this technology, you can just be more minimalistic because you don't need a ton of stuff. You just need the right thing played the right way. And as an instrumentalist and as a musician, I really can, I can get behind that. And, you know, especially when I can literally put my hands on a sound, it, it means more to me. Thank you.